Hey guys, are you looking for a yoga workout that's actually made for men? If so, check out this routine. We're gonna be going through a variety of yoga postures to address full body strength, flexibility, and balance. I'll also be showing you modifications so that if you're not as flexible as a yoga instructor, you'll still be able to get the benefits of each pose as if you were one. I'm also gonna be showing you exercises uh, that aren't included in typical yoga workouts. So we're gonna be going through body weight exercises, with a, a bit of a physical therapy influence because they're really effective for helping you to build strength and body control. So check out this workout, hope you enjoy. Hey guys, my name is Dean, welcome to Manflow Yoga. I'm super excited that you're here today to do this Yoga for Men workout with me. And if you haven't seen the other workouts in this series, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, subscribe, hit the bell button, get notifications, and you'll see the other workouts that we've already uploaded and future workouts for when those do come available. All right, so in this workout today, we're gonna to be going through full body strength, flexibility, and balance. I'm gonna walk you through every aspect of each posture so you know how to do it, the proper technique, what you should be feeling, what you shouldn't be feeling, and what are the target areas. You're gonna need a little bit of equipment, uh, and if you don't have any yoga equipment, you can usually get by uh, with other household items. We're gonna be using a yoga mat. If you don't have a yoga mat, you can use a towel. We're also gonna be using two yoga blocks. I recommend cork yoga blocks just because they're a lot more durable and supportive, but if you don't have yoga blocks, you can also use two stacks of books, uh, two water bottles, or foam rollers, so there are a lot of options there as well. And then lastly, we're going to be using a yoga strap. You can also, instead of using a strap, use a belt, a dog leash, uh, or a piece of rope. Anything that you can use like this. All right, so. As mentioned, I'm going to go through the postures, make sure you know how to do them properly, and also show you modifications. Uh, so if you're not flexible, you'll still be able to do this workout. All right, guys, let's get to it. We're going to start on the ground with what's called a puppy pose. And this is kind of a blend between a down dog, which is a very common yoga posture, and a child's pose. If you have your blocks, I'm going to have you put the blocks near the top of the mat at shoulder width distance. Put them up as high as you can. This modification works really nicely for guys who have poor posture or really tight shoulders. So you're gonna put your hands on top of the blocks, walk your knees back, try to get your knees right below your hips. So instead of bringing your butt back toward your heels like you would in a child's pose, you're gonna have your knees kind of close above your hips. And depending on whatever's comfortable for your feet, you can either keep your toes tucked or untuck your toes and put the tops of your feet flat on the ground. From here, put the hands on the blocks, relax your head toward the ground, make your arms strong, so I want you to squeeze your biceps, squeeze your triceps, and then pull your hips away from your hands. So we're lengthening the area in your shoulders, so stretching your lats, we're stretching your chest, and you're also gonna feel the muscles in your upper back working here. So we're partly building strength, and we're also working on your flexibility. Keep your head relaxed. If you're pretty loose, you might be able to bring your head to the ground, but most people probably can't do that, so I'm gonna have you just keep your head up and in a neutral or comfortable position, wherever that is for you. So here the focus is on your shoulders, your chest, your upper body. You can also work on warming up your wrist though, to make sure that you don't have any wrist pain in yoga. Just make sure that you're really squeezing those blocks with your fingertips, kind of pressing your palms into the blocks, and just making your forearms as active as possible. As you're here, I want you to slow down your breathing, breathing in and out of your nose. So as we go through this routine, try your best to be conscious of your breathing. And you're not gonna think about it all the time, but when you do think about it, I want you to slow it down. Breathe in and out of your nose, nice and slow. And you might notice that you pause your breathing from time to time, that's okay. Just go back to breathing. All right, from here we're gonna go into some wrist stretches. So I'm gonna have you come into a tabletop position, 
Turn your palms to face down, fingers to face you. And then as, as however much is comfortable, you can lean your elbows back toward your body. So you're moving from a more obtuse angle with the backs of your wrists to a more acute angle. So maybe getting to 90 degrees if possible. That's kind of a good benchmark uh, to work on wrist mobility. And then I just want you to move a little bit here. So instead of being static, I want you to move just a little bit. You can kind of turn from side to side with your wrist. You can lean further back. You can bring it forward. You can play around with the spacing of your fingers. So this is just a really nice, easy wrist stretch to release tension in your forearms. If you do a lot of stuff with your hands, this will this will feel pretty nice, or it'll feel really tight at first, but just remember to breathe in and out of your nose, and that sends the signal to your body to relax your muscles. So breathing is good because it helps us control our body, but it also helps us to stretch and release tension. All right, another wrist stretch here. I'm gonna have you flip your hands so that your palms are facing up and your fingers are facing one another. Try to put some of the weight in your hips at first because this is kind of a, if you haven't done this before, it might feel a little funky, might be a little uncomfortable for your wrist. So start by putting more weight in your hips and then you can lean more forward, bringing the shoulders above the hands to shift more of that stretch into your wrist. You're gonna feel this in the backs of your wrist. It might feel kind of weird if you haven't done it before, but this is a really nice way to counter what we tend to do a lot of during the day. So if you're active on your phone, if you sit at a computer, you probably do a lot of stuff with your wrist in the exact opposite position of what we're doing right now. So this is a nice way to counter that wrist extension, work on your wrist flexion, and uh, just work on the overall health of your wrist. You can also squeeze your fingers in toward your palms, work on squeezing your inner forearms, kind of like a wrist curl, and this can add to this stretch. All right, nice job, go ahead and release that. From here we're gonna move into a low lunge. Step your right foot up to the top of the mat, you don't need the blocks for this. You can move those out of the way. And I want you to put as much weight as you can into your right leg. So tendency in the low lunge is to get lazy here and dump all of that weight into your left knee. Try to put most of that weight into your right leg, particularly in the hips. If you do have pain in the knee here, you can put a towel, you can put a pillow or something under that knee to prevent pain. There's no reason to have pain in the knee. Uh, while you're resting it on the ground. So use a cushion, use some sort of padding if you do have pain there. Make sure that your butt is under your torso. So I want you to think leading with the hips, not leading with the shoulders. Get a nice straight line through your spine from the bottom of your spine all the way up to your head. Lift your ribs away from your hips so we're nice and tall. And then bring your hands behind your neck, interlacing the fingers. So this is our low lunge position. It also helps here if you want to pull your chin in toward your throat, pressing it into, the, into your hands. And now we're working on a little bit of neck strength too and countering bad posture with your neck. From here, we're gonna to move to a twist. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, without moving your hips, turn toward the right. And you don't need to twist that much uh, to work on your spine mobility here. Try to keep your hips squared forward. There's going to be a tendency for you to drop that right hip back and kind of turn your left hip in. Do your best to keep your hips squared here. So just moving with the spine. As you inhale, think about getting taller. As you exhale, squeeze that right elbow back. Twist deeper into this twist. But again, focusing on the hips, making sure that they're facing as straight forward as possible, and you're squeezing both glutes here, so you're working on hip strength and hip mobility. Next exhale, bring your arms straight out, so keep your body twisted, and then extend your arms out to the sides, and see if you can twist a little bit deeper. Stay tall, so think about pushing the top of your head up, almost as if you're pushing your head into the ceiling, or if you can imagine someone putting their hand on top of your head and pushing into that hand. 
One more breath here in this lunge. And then turn back to center, release your hands, and switch sides. So moving into a low lunge on the other side. Again, same deal here. You want to make sure that your hips are facing forward. We're leading with the hips. The hips are under the shoulders. Push down through both feet. It helps to keep your back toes tucked. That's going to make your back leg more active. And squeeze both glutes. So not just engaging the front leg, but also squeezing the back of your right hip. So squeezing your hamstrings, squeezing your glutes, and that's going to help with stretching your hip flexors. This is a big, uh, really nice stretch to help with preventing back pain. It's going to help your knees, uh, and it's good for your lower body mobility and strength as well. So pushing down through your front foot, lifting your ribs away from the hips, keeping the hips active. And then bring your hands behind your neck, interlacing the fingers in this modified low lunge. Again, if you do feel any sort of discomfort in the knees, slip a towel, slip a pillow under there. There's no reason to have knee pain in this exercise. And now take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, twist toward the left. So turning your torso to face over toward the left. Remember, keep your legs active. That's going to reduce that tension on the knee. And we're doing our best to keep the hips squared forward here. As you inhale, get taller. As you exhale, twist deeper. Now always come back and check in with your form. Make sure that your hips are facing forward, that your hips are engaged, that we're keeping the ribs lifted away from the hips, so staying tall. And remembering your breathing. Breathing in and out of the nose. Exhale helps you work deeper into the stretch. And then go ahead and bring your arms out on the next exhale. Squeezing your arms toward the back, getting them as wide as possible. And then seeing if you can get your torso to face a little bit more over toward the left. A couple breaths here. And again, even though the knee is down, we want to stay active through this lunge. One more breath. And then bring it back to the middle. Go ahead and take your hands down. Bring it back toward a tabletop position and finishing off with the lunge. Nice job. Here we're going to move into a plank. Plant your hands about shoulder width distant. Index fingers face forward, thumbs face in. Think about plugging your arms into your shoulders, opening up your chest, pulling the shoulder blades together and down, and then tuck your toes and lift up into a plank. If plank isn't working for you right now, go ahead and put your knees down, and you can do a plank with your knees down. While you're in plank, I want you to think about wrapping your biceps forward to help with external rotation in your shoulders. That's going to help with your posture. And then again, pulling the shoulder blades together and down toward your hips to open up your shoulders. Your neck should be relaxed here, so you should be able to move your head kind of from side to side freely. You shouldn't have the shoulders up near the ears. And in plank, we're also working on your thighs and your hips. So squeeze your thighs, squeeze your hips, keep your belly button up. And then to make this more challenging, squeeze your hands and your feet toward one another. And as soon as you'll do that, you'll feel your abs start to work a little bit more. Maybe even start to shake through your body. That's a good thing. It means those muscles are working, they're fatiguing, and you're getting stronger. Continue to breathe in and out of your nose. Just 10 more seconds. Deep breath. All right, and then very slowly, keep your chest open, lower yourself down to the ground, elbows squeeze in tight to the sides of the body, chest flat on the ground, and here we're going to move into a cobra. Flip your feet, press the tops of your feet into the ground, big toes touch, hug your legs together, and then using your core strength, using your hip strength, 
lightly lift your chest just three inches away from the ground. Not using your hands at all to lift here. Keep your hands relaxed on the ground or you can lift them off the ground entirely to make sure you're not cheating. Continue to push your feet into the ground. So as hard as you can, push your feet down. Feel your quadriceps engage. Legs are still hugging toward one another. And by doing this, we're using your hips and your core to support your back. So we're not just lifting with the back here, using your core and using your hips to lift. Squeeze your elbows back and then tight to your sides. See if you can pull your chest forward a little bit more, so getting length through your body, and then look slightly forward a little bit more. You just got 10 seconds to go here in this Cobra. Keep breathing. Squeeze the abs, squeeze the thighs, push your feet down. Five, four, three, two, one, and then release. Flat onto the ground. From here, take it into a child's pose. So I'm gonna have you bring your knees wide, big toes touch. Allow your hips to relax toward your heels, kind of in the seated position to start. If you can't quite get there, that's okay. Don't worry about it, we'll work on that. Keep your chest, ribs drawn in, abs tight, just like you have them for the plank. And then walk your arms out in front of you. If you have those blocks, I'm gonna have you put your hands on top of the blocks. This is just a little bit uh, more accessible for guys who have tight shoulders. And you're gonna work on your flexibility and your shoulders a little bit more with your hands on these blocks. Again, try to keep your butt back toward the heels as much as you comfortably can. If you notice uh, that it's painful for the knees, you can bring your hips slightly forward. So just whatever's comfortable for you here, allowing your hips to sink back and using the blocks if you'd like for a little bit more shoulder opening. Keep your chin relaxed. If your head can touch the ground, your head can go to the ground. If you'd rather not use the blocks or just see what it feels like without the blocks, you can also try that modification. In child's pose, this is a resting pose, but I want you to tighten your abs. So see if you can engage your abs, just like you had for the plank. And that's going to help with a better release through your lower back. Engaging your abs releases tension in the lower back. You might also feel some stretching through your hips here and also through the shoulders. One more breath in child's pose. All right. And then from here, take it up into a tabletop position. By the way, any of these poses you can do on their own. So you don't have to do this entire sequence if you only have time to do one pose or the other. Then just do those couple of poses every now and then. From here, we're gonna step up into a runner's lunge. So just like we did for a low lunge, we're gonna have you put blocks on either side of your front foot and then tuck your toes and lift your back knee to come into a runner's lunge. The goal here is to get a straight line from your back heel through your head. So depending on your hip mobility here, your hips might be higher up, your feet might be closer together, they might be further apart if you're more flexible. So find a position that works for you, that allows you to keep your back flat and hang out there for a couple of breaths. Chin is relaxed toward the throat, so I'm not craning my head and looking forward. I wanna keep that chin in and keep your chin pulling toward your throat, neck pulling back, and that's going to help you counter what most of us tend to do during the day incorrectly with our posture. From here, we're gonna move into an airplane. So keep your hips squared forward. I'm gonna have you move the blocks forward about six inches or a foot. Press into your right foot. Lift your back foot off the ground. Keep your right leg bent. Pull your chest forward and up, still looking straight down at the ground. Point your left toes back into a supported airplane. So using the blocks, so we don't have to worry about balance as much, and we can also focus on keeping your back flat. Big problem with guys, our hips aren't as flexible. So when we go up into a pose like this, where we're stretching our hamstrings, the back tends to round if we try to just copy what the girl in the yoga studio next to us is doing. So if you bend your knees, that allows you to straighten your back more, and that helps to preserve the integrity of your spine 
and while still getting a nice stretch through your hamstrings. Try to keep your hips facing straight forward and down here. You might notice that there's a tendency to kind of hike your left hip up or maybe get lazy with the left leg and let it droop. Keep that leg active, keep the hips squared. One more breath here. And then slowly bring it back to that runner's lunge we started in. Release the knee down. Nicely done. And let's switch sides. So now moving to a runner's lunge with your left foot forward. Start with the blocks on either side of your left foot. Tuck your right toes. Squeeze your right thigh to lift the knee. Chest pulling forward and up. Again, focusing on that straight line from the back heel through the top of your head. Chin pulling in toward your throat, neck pulling back. Abs are tight here. So you don't want to come up to the point where you're arching your back and relaxing your abs. You also don't want to be folded forward so that all of the weight is in your front leg. Try to find a balance between that where you're using your core, where your back is flat, and the weight is evenly distributed through your entire body, right? You're using the back leg, using your front leg as well. Most of the weight here should be in the hips. Nice thing about having these blocks is again, we can keep the back flat and we can also use the blocks for a little bit of support with our body weight. We don't want to dump all of the weight into the hands here, but maybe lightly resting the palms here or even coming up onto the fingertips is a good idea. This pose working on hip strength, simultaneously working on hip mobility. All right, from here, let's move into our airplane. I'm going to have you move those blocks forward about a foot or six inches. Shift your weight into your left foot, drag your right foot forward, and then squeeze your right leg up. Here, I like to look back at my hips and my right leg to make sure I'm doing it correctly there. So your right toe should be facing straight back. The top of your right foot should be facing the ground and your hips should be squared. You don't want your hips facing off to the right. You don't want your right hip kind of drooping down. We want to keep that leg up, keep the hips squared. With your torso, pull your chest forward and up. Use your blocks to help with that. Again, the blocks allow you uh, to do this exercise properly without rounding your back, even though you're probably not as flexible through your hamstrings. Keep your left leg bent as much as you need to uh, to keep your back flat. You're still going to feel a stretch through the back of your legs, but uh, we're doing the exercise safely for your back. Take a couple breaths here, chin still pulled into the throat, your head is looking straight down at the ground. Make sure you're keeping your right leg active here, pointing the toes straight back, squeezing your right leg up. One more breath. And then you slowly release that back leg toward the ground, coming back to your runner's lunge, bring the blocks back and release your light leg to the ground. All right, nicely done with that sequence. Here we're gonna move up to a standing pose. We're gonna work on some balancing and that'll be it for the active part. So bear with me for a little longer here. I'm gonna have you stand on your right foot and if you need help with balance, just have a, you can stand next to a wall, you can stand next to your couch, stand next to a piece of exercise equipment, whatever you have handy. It's better to use support and have proper technique than it is to balance and not use any support with improper technique. So use props. Stand on your right foot, bring your left knee up to hip level, nice and slow and controlled. Your hips and your toes are gonna be facing the same direction. So do your best to make sure that your toes are facing straight forward and your hips are facing straight forward. This is going to help with your proper hip and your glute engagement. So making sure that we're strengthening the glutes so we can support the back and the knees. Left knee comes up to about hip level and then push your left hand into your left thigh and reach your right arm straight overhead. This is a fairly intense exercise. So it's as challenging as you want it to be. Really drive your hand into your thigh, push your thigh back up into the hand. This is strengthening your hip flexors. These, uh, those muscles literally connect your back and your hips to your leg. So it's a, it's a very important muscle. When it's tight, when it's weak, it causes back pain. So this is a really nice way to strengthen it. And then from here, keeping your hips forward, we're gonna move to a lunge position. So slowly step your left leg 
to the back of the room as slow and controlled as you can. And then if your hips aren't super flexible, you're gonna have more of a shallow stance. Hips are under your shoulders, legs are squeezing toward one another. This is very similar to the low lunge that we did before, except your back knee is in the air now. Right, so the hips are still under the shoulders, my abs are still tight, my back is flat, both glutes engaged. I'm just bringing that back knee up off the ground. And then bring your arms overhead. Either straight overhead or a more guy-friendly modification for tight shoulders, bring your arms into goal post arms. This way we're getting a better stretch of the chest. We're also working on upper back strength. If you're noticing that you have trouble balancing here, squeeze your legs toward one another. So my right leg is going to squeeze back. My left, foot leg, my left leg squeezes forward. Chin still pulling in toward the throat, working on my posture. And elbows squeezing toward the back. One more breath here. And from here, going back to our standing one leg balance, push down through your right foot, slowly bring that left knee up to hip level. Might not be as slow and controlled as, as I did. Maybe it looks something more like this, right? Not as cool, but not as, uh, not as smooth, but that's okay, you'll get better with time. And then from here, we've got one more balance. I'm gonna bring your, have you bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee, bring your left hand to your left hip, and face over toward the left. So kind of like that low lunge with the twist we did at the beginning, but now we're standing and doing it. And we're only here for a couple of breaths. If you have trouble here or you lose your balance, just bring that left foot down. Try to get as tall as you can. As you inhale, you get tall. As you exhale, you twist deeper or you squeeze your muscles a little bit more. Last breath. And release that left foot down. All right, nicely done. I've got one more side. So we're starting in that balance with the left leg, bringing your right knee up to hip level. I'm gonna face you straight on just so you kind of see what I'm doing from the front now. So my right knee is lifting up to my hip, uh, hip level. If you wanna challenge yourself, you can go even higher. Or if you're not feeling it at hip level, you can go a little bit lower. Now we're gonna add the hand. So right hand goes to the right thigh. I'm pushing my right thigh into my right hand, pushing my right hand down into the right thigh, and that's going to work my hip flexors. From here, bringing my left arm up, so this is adding some shoulder mobility and also some upper back strengthening, squeezing that left arm back as much as I can while pushing down to my left foot so I'm staying strong in my balancing leg. So everything's working here. I've got my both arms working, shoulders are working, both hips are working, and of course, that standing leg is working to balance. Give one more breath here. And then slow and controlled, keeping your hips squared forward, bringing your right leg to the back, stepping into a high lunge. Toes are gonna face straight forward. Hips are facing straight forward. My legs are squeezing toward one another. My butt is under my torso. So if you look at me from the side here, I'm not sticking my butt up behind me, letting my lower back arch. I'm squeezing my glutes, bringing my butt under my body. If you notice that it's difficult to keep your back legs straight without arching your back, you can bring your leg a little bit closer, so you can bring your stance a little bit closer together, or you can soften your right knee. So let your right knee bend a little bit, and then you'll be able to bring your butt under your body. Arms are up either straight overhead or in goalpost arms, whichever one feels better for you. If you want to work on your shoulder health, I'd recommend doing the, uh, I'd recommend doing the goalpost arms just because that does get a little bit more back strengthening. So here we're feeling the hips working, right? Both thighs, both glutes. We're feeling the right hip flexor stretching. And if you've got the goalpost arm uh, modification with the arms, feeling stretching uh, through your chest and the muscles in the upper back between the shoulder blades are working. Just one more breath here, stay nice and tall. And then step back up to that one leg balance, bring your right knee up to hip level, push down through your left foot, get as tall as you can, top of the head pressing up, and then bring your left hand across the outside of the right knee, right hand to the right hip, twist over toward the right. As you inhale, top of the head lifts up. 
As you exhale, squeeze the right leg higher, twist a little bit deeper, and squeeze your left leg a little bit more. Just two breaths here. Slow and controlled. If you need to put your foot down or you need your hand on something for balance, go for it. And then set that right foot down and twist back to center. All right, guys, and that's it. So that's our Yoga for Men workout. Again, full body work here. We did strength, mobility, and flexibility, and balance. And you saw a variety of postures and modifications that you probably won't see in a typical yoga class. So that's kind of our style with Manflow Yoga. If you want to learn more about that, or you want access to all of our workouts and programs, go to manflowyoga.com join. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notifications when new videos go live. And then make sure to leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the workout. Uh, and if you liked any of this video, hit that like button. It's super helpful. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this workout. Hope you enjoyed our Yoga for Men series. There are more coming. And if you missed the other ones, be sure to check out my YouTube channel and see episodes one and two. All right guys, that's it. I'll see you on the next workout. Thanks for joining me.